And we are live. What's up, guys? Let's see who's on Yo. the chat. Bro, it's been like a month, way more than a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually did record an episode like a couple of days ago last week, but um, we haven't released it yet because I I I, I forgot. Yeah, that, that's why. <laughs> but it's cool. Um, right, guys. So if you're here, drop a message on the chat and you can shout you out. But um, yeah, there's four people here. Hello, everyone. So hello. Um, what we're going to be doing today, guys, is we are going to be launching Formly Logic. Um, yeah. So, Vim, as you guys know, on our last episode, I believe we also did a live stream where we gave a live demo of Formly and what's it about. But uh, but today, you know, we're going to be releasing this, you know, um, extra kind of feature or, you know, subscription, you can say, for Formly called um, Formerly Logic, where it has a bunch of other features for a monthly price. And yeah, we're just going to be diving a lot more deeper into it, talking about the features, the benefits of the plans and whatnot, and how it works, and perhaps, you know, even a live demo. So um, yeah, yeah you know, Vim, you created this tool. Um, so I'll just let you take the stage from here. <laughs> cool, man. But yeah, this, I think you have seen this since the early days as well. So I've given you like a demo. Yeah. But I think everyone, I think sort of seen it on all the other channels that I've sort of went and plugged the whole week. But I think actually launching it... Vim, Vim some... went on a Webflow podcast tour. Oh, like I, weeks my ago. face was <laughs> everywhere. It's like they ask for your for your DP, right? I only have one DP and everyone yeah. just uses the same one. So it just looks like I'm on every channel. But yeah, I think everybody sort of knew Logic was there, but it wasn't officially launched. Um, and it was only put up to like a very small group of people. But now it's going to go live. It took a long time. It's, I think we work on like Logic for way more than like a month and a half at this point. But it was just mainly catching so many little bugs and like use cases that we never thought of. And it's still not like super polished or whatever. There will be bugs. But I think it's at a point where we can, you know, put it out there for people to start using it. And cool. Let me share my screen and show you guys the landing page. And there's a thing that we never mentioned before like a huge announcement sort of thing hopefully mm -hmm. it does go well but yeah let's let me share my screen can you see my screen yeah cool so if you go head on to the tryformly.com you should see some changes and the main one is first of all introducing formally logic Wait, Jim, I, think, so, I think you're sharing one screen i don't think you're sharing the right screen oh really yeah, what screen? Because I, what I can see right now is StreamYard. Oh, that's your that's your screen, bro. Oh, <laughs> now you should okay, see wait, my screen. So, uh, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah. There we go. Yep. So once just go to tryformly.com slash formly dash logic, you should see this yep. landing page. You immediately can see some changes, some things that we've already added. But let's you know do talk about that a bit later. But what you can actually build with formly logic. Is first of all, you can add logic to your basic Webflow forms. Um, and this is, again, quite useful for contact forms, support forms, e-commerce. Um, for agencies and freelancers, you can build a whole quote form, a quote form like a lead generation form. Um, and then the whole idea is everything is done on Webflow. There's no external dashboard that you need to configure all this logic with just two attributes and a little bit of you know brain power. Anyone can, can do this. It is... I do know when I, you know, when we start the, the live build or like the demo, it might look a bit daunting. It might look like it's very complex, but the moment you build something and you know how it works, I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to work. It's going to like really set expectations really high. Another thing that you can build is quizzes. So this I would imagine is useful for e-commerce brands or even SaaS companies with like 10 different pricing. Like for example, Webflow, right? They have site pricing, they have agency pricing, they have enterprise price, and you can build like a quiz based on what the user has inputted, redirect them to the right section, and then get them to sign up for the right plan. Um, that's one use case, but you can also build like fun games. So this could be like a, a demo that we're going to show is like an office game that we built, all using no code. As long as you the user can select where they're going, you have all the power in the world to to create like fun quizzes and this is 
something that I think more people will start exploring is creating your own adventure sort of sites. So this, what do I mean by this? It's very, it's the same similar concept to quizzes, but because the user can choose what they want to see, you can actually tailor a site that's made for them. Um, and this could be very powerful if you're building like a very interactive microsite or you want to introduce a new product or service or just you know, have fun with Webflow. Formally Logic takes away that hard code that you need to do and you can then work on top of this. So I can show you some examples um, where we have used Formally Quiz even on client project um, and it, it's really powerful. Even if you don't use it as we intended it to be, you can add your own custom code on top of Formly Logic, as you normally do, and you can extend the functionality of the logic. Just assume, mm -hmm. just think of Formly Logic like a base that you don't have to rewrite every single time you want to build, you know, logic to your Webflow forms. B before we go any further, anyone have any questions? Do you have any questions? If any, yeah, not for me. Um, I already know quite a lot of this, but if anyone else has any questions, yeah, just drop it in the chat. I will be happy to answer. Where, as Vim said, cool. I think I've I've tried logic, um, you know, this formally thing in the past, you know, um, I think before it went live, um, Vim actually gave me, you know, a, a demo for himself and whatnot, and it's actually the the demo that he showed me was literally the the basic function of logic the first, i can yeah, see yeah the first kind of iteration or whatever but i can see he improved it and whatnot and logic just makes you know although it's a simple concept it just makes the possibilities of what you can create endless i remember the other day right and i even told him this i had this idea of something that i was uh, i wanted to build inside a workflow and i was like oh i can use formula logic for this but i forgot what it was but it was actually really really cool um what we've actually going to do is after you know formula logic's been out for a bit we're actually going to be um cre uh, i'm actually going to build a you know you know a quiz i don't want to really i don't yeah. want to you know tell everyone what it is right now but it's going to be for the webflow community just something a little fun you know collaboration with uh, you know myself and vim and um yeah you guys are gonna from that i think you guys are going to see the kind of uh benefits and power of formula logic so yeah i'm excited for that yep Cool. And <clears throat> the way um, formally logic works is by having two attributes. So you have two, you have a data go to attribute. I think everybody knows this. Uh, and you have a data answer attribute. So the go to attribute, think of it like the branch on a, on a flow chart that's reaching out to the next step. And the answer is the next step. So to sort of explain it, this we recommend anytime you're using logic, to create like a very simple flow chart of what you're trying to build. First of all, it helps you figure out how you want to structure the form and also gives you an idea on how many steps or, um, that you need. So in a normal multi-step form, it's just a linear form, right? You have step one, step two, step three, and it just ends there. But with logic, you can have many different branches. Think of it like different timelines or different branches. And based on what the user is clicking, they can redirect, they can choose their own path. So this is an example for, let's say an agency or a freelancer looking to build like a lead capture form. Sometimes you wanna ask questions that if they do answer yes, you want to ask them more questions or if they answer no, you don't want to give that question to them, right? It just saves their time. So for example, in this, maybe you wanna know if the client already has a website or a Webflow site. And if they say yes, you ask them for the for the link so that you can check the back end, you can check how the site's built, where it's built and all of that. If they don't have a website, no problem. You can just skip to the next question. And I think this is where a lot of people are going to find value is pricing. So I think I have this problem in, in our agency and I think you also have this on Calendly or where, wherever you build forms. When a client is booking in a call, you can ask how many pages or what services are looking for, but the pricing is going to be a static thing, right? You you will see options to have, you know, 15 page website design developed, but they, a client still has the option to click, you know, one to two K, which just doesn't work, right? So with this, you can build forms where based on what your client or your lead selects, show them different pricing so that they understand what the pricing is. And at the end of the day, you they don't even need to book in a call if they don't want to. It's a very easy way for people to filter out you know, clients that they don't want to work with or the budget just doesn't match. So for example, in this example, if a client has 
you know, 15 plus pages, you don't want them to show like the price for a landing page, right? You want to show them the price that you charge for something like that. So that's where logic becomes very useful. And so the way it works is on Webflow, you give um, the branch a data go-to attribute. So that means to this, the data go-to attribute basically means this little branch that connects to the next step. And the data answer attribute is the next step. So you have to give these two attributes to elements on Webflow, which we will look into. I, I know it sounds gibberish right now, um, but basically all you need is two, three attributes and boom, you have logic. And what can you actually build with this? So this was the very first test that we built. And if you look at it, it's, it's a complete quiz with I think almost 16 to 18 different answers based on what the user is clicking on. So I think people have seen this game everywhere. So if you want to play, just head out to the site and you know you can you know, fill in some questions and you get answers based on that. And the final thing is Formly Pro. So Formly is going to be free. Formly is always going to be free, as we said. But for Logic, it's going to be paid. And that's not just for Logic. You get Pro-only features like form memory. So for example, if someone fills out a form and they abandon it halfway, when they come back, all the inputs that they've already filled is going to be there. It's not going to be deleted or they don't have to start from scratch. There's going to be country calling code. So <clears throat> let's say you're asking from which country they are from, and we all know that drop-down list. There's no way to do it on Webflow. You have to you know, manually go in. We are going to do this with attribute. With two attributes, you can pull in all the country lists and also search through them. So you can search for United Kingdom, and it just shows United Kingdom select it and that summits and that's your select view. That's going to be formally component library. So imagine because the main reason we want to make a component library is that a lot of people are using the clonables, but the clonables are already styled and built in a way where, um, you know, it's not catering to everyone's need. The library component library is going to help simplify things. So you can just copy and paste and style it and get a formally multi-step form or even a logic form done in like a couple of minutes. We are also going to do radio and text input based logic, which means, so right now logic just works with radio inputs because you need to tell the code what the user is clicking on and based on what they click, they go to the next one. But with text input, you can set what they should type in to go to the next step. So this could be useful to build, um, you know, tests or validation of human verification, basically stuff like that, where you can set, you know, if they enter, you know, Vimalan, they go to the next step. And if they don't, they go, they don't go to the next step, stuff like that. Number input basically means if they input a number more than 10, show them this, less than 10, show them that. Or if they put anything more than, you know, 300, show them this page. We can do all of that. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, powerful quiz mode basically means that. Um, we have an example that I'll show you guys later, but you can build a fully fledged quiz, like a personality quiz or anything of that sort. And at the end, the user gets a personalized profile um, and you can show them based on what they selected, what profile they are, what or what product suits them best and sort of break down all their, question, their answers to the questions. So that's, <clears throat> that's something that we are also working on. Formally test, again, is a lot, but formally test is basically a subset of quiz, but it allows you to create um, quick tests to, on Webflow. Test meaning, um, you know, you can build like general knowledge quiz or stuff like that, where if you answer the correct answer, you go to the next step. And if you don't, you get a wrong answer and you can calculate these points. And at the end, based on the number of points, show them uh, different things. So if you, if you answer eight out of 10 questions, you pass, and if you answer less than that, you fail. So that is also possible. And there's a lot more features that we're still planning. Um, as a Formly Pro member, you also get priority same day support. So Formly users already. So if you're not on the Slack channel, um, Slack support is very good. We try to get things done immediately. But Pro users gonna get priority support. We will do anything to get things to work for you. Um, you'll also have a feature request wish list, so you can upload on features that you want to see or even submit features that, that is missing on Formly right now. And if it works, we'll add that to the list. 
and there's a super fan thing so it's going to be a limit a very limited run of like 30 people but this is just for like everyone who wants to support and really thinks there's something here um you know you can sign up for a super fan it's only a one time payment and you get to become like a stake decision maker informally so whatever feature we want to add any pricing change anything re- related to formally you will be consulted you'll be sort of you know part of the decision making board of formally and again you get early access to everything not you know any beta features any um features that we're testing you know as a super fan you'll be the first one to test it out so we're just testing out pricing plans so if you like what we think we are doing and if you think logic is going to be useful please sign up it's only six dollars a month um, and it's going to be super powerful it's going to get way more powerful once more features are being introduced and it's a good way for us to sort of you know keep making this you know a lot better yeah and we got a question from dimitri vim yeah. i love getting your I, I love your getting a price tag on such a premium product i would love if there was a lifetime pricing for all your products and not just 199 for formally so i think there, there is a lifetime pricing which is 199 bucks and there is a subscription yeah. of six bucks a month yeah, so I think he means like not just formally, like he wants to support. Um, if you want, mm-hmm. there is a, a buy us a coffee page on formally. You can pay whatever you want, buy us 10 cups of coffee. We'll assume um, that you are a super fan and just add you to whatever things that we do. Again, this is super fan is $199 for a lifetime. And that's only for 30 people just because we want to keep the team small. Um, that would help you, you know, be you know, a decision maker and you can sort of shape how Formly becomes, from what direction Formly goes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, do you want to, Vim, do you want to move on to any a live demo perhaps? Yeah, I will show you what we can actually build um, with Logic. And I think you, you know what, which side I'm actually going to show. Um, <laughs> so let me share my screen again. So this was a client site that we built for a client and it's all using um, Formly Logic and Formly. So this is a client that we work with, Polygo, and we built this amazing quiz for them. Um, and based on what answer you're selecting, you go to you get your own personalized um, a, a character, a profile, basically. And if you look at this, this is all built using Formly. There's only extra code. The only extra code is which we're testing out with formally quizzes. It sort of aggregates all these points based on what the user has selected. And then it calculates a final point. And based on what your point is, it is going, going to sort of um, show you a different different profile. So if I unlock this page, boom, I get this is only whoever answered in that specific order. They come to a, a specific page. And here you can... You know, depending on what's your pro- uh, what's your profile, you can get different answers, and you know you can add more to this. The so whole thing is built with Formly, and Formly quiz will allow you to do this. Um, in terms of <clears throat> in terms of what we have already built, I think everybody knows about the Office game. Again, this is all built with Formly Logic. This one has no extra code at all. The whole thing is built with Logic, so it it shows how powerful it could be. And if I quickly open up. Webflow to show you guys the back end of it. Uh, so it's not going to be a clonable because it's only for pro users, but I'm just going to give you guys a sneak peek of what, um, how it's actually built. So for something as complex as this, you know, it has over 30 steps. The structure is fairly simple. You just put, it's basically how you would build a multi-step form, but you just need to add some logic to it for it to work. Um, and all of this is explained once you sign up as a Formly Pro. There's an intro video that you know helps you understand how logic works at a much deeper level. And there are a couple of examples like this one, as well as an agency, um, an agency form with logic. So if you open up this one, again, I think this is going to be very useful for a lot of big agencies and clients and freelancers. So based, so I'm going to just quickly answer this. I can get my name and I'm going to give my company name. So here's the first part of logic. Do you have a website? Yes, I do. Now it's going to ask me for my URL, right? 
But if I do say, no, actually, no, I don't have a website. Now it's going to ask me a different question. It's going to ask me, do I need both design and development? Yeah, I do. Then it's going to ask me more follow-up questions. And here's the second part of logic is, the second logic in this form is how many page are we looking at? So if I select one to three, it's going to show me a, a lower range, right? But if I go back and I select 15, 15 pages, it's going to show me a much higher range. And all of this is built with code, with no code, absolutely no code besides formally logic. And you can even extend this further. We have just stopped here, but you can extend this further. And based on what services they're looking for, if they're looking for design and development, you can ask separate questions. If they're looking just development, you can ask separate questions. If they're looking for Webflow maintenance, you know, you can have a question asking for their read-only link. So this will help you ask all the questions that you need before you jump on a call with them, potentially not even jump on a call with them, right? And we are going to be using this on our agency side as well. So that's an example. The quiz is an example. There's also another example called formly-coffeeflow. This is more towards e-commerce. Um, you know, if you have, if you're already running a coffee company or any sort of company sending multiple different products and, you know, maybe... The, the, the user doesn't know what coffee they want. So you can take a quiz. You can build this for clients. You know, if you say no, it's going to ask you to go buy a coffee in Starbucks. Mm -hmm. But if you actually properly answer the quiz, each quiz, you know, each answer you press is going to, you know, redirect you to a different product. And here, just imagine instead of saying share on Twitter or restart your quiz, you can say buy product and link the user directly to that product. So you can build all of this for clients and help them, um, you know, get more customers, get make pricing a lot easier. Um, so again, a lot more potential there. Yeah, we've got a question. Um, restrict form, a good feature could be restrict form somewhere after three attempts, for example. Um, what do you think about that thing? So I'm guessing yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can, you know, count how many times they tried submitting it. But I don't know why you would you want to do that. Um, if it's like bot prevention or something like that, you can't, a bot can't actually submit a multi-step form because you still need to fill out all the steps and you cannot just hit the submit button. Um, but yeah, we can, we can look in all of this. If you're a pro member, you know, you can, you can suggest this feature and we'll put it up in our roadmap. Sure. And uh, we've got another question, custom redirect. I'm guessing once the form is submitted. So, yes. You know, whatever. Yeah. So for this, I think the main use case would be for a formally quiz, as I showed you with our client work, is that based on what the user has selected, you can redirect them to a different page. All of that will be possible um, in formally quiz, which is going to come out like next year. We're still working on like how to implement it the best way. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more potential that we are going to be, that's going to unlock, you know, as we release all more features for formally. And I think being a formally pro puts you at the, at the front seat. Cool. Awesome. I'm just going to link the sign up or sorry, the pricing page below. Oh, yes, please. So anyone wants I to really try forgot. it out. Uh, there we go. Yep. It's only $6 a month. So, you know, if you don't want to commit a year worth of it, you can just sign up for the monthly. Um, you can cancel anytime. Just let me know. We'll cancel it up anytime. No questions asked. Um, and there's going to be a lot more clonables that are going to come, as I said. The formerly component library is going to be our main focus because that's going to help people build much, much quicker using formerly. All the attributes will be added for you. You just need to go ahead and style it um, to suit mm -hmm. however you want. And we are also thinking of making um, the component library very useful in the sense that we're going to try to abstract a lot of logic flows. So for example, agencies would want to build logic forms with pricing and stuff like that. So we're trying to gather up a lot of resources for that, and that should go live, mm -hmm. you know, probably early next um, next year. Yeah, yeah. We got a question from Mohammed again. Will there yeah. be a resetting option when we have the form memory, if we want to start from fresh again? So is there an option? Yeah. I'm guessing to reset the. Yeah, actually, we didn't think of that, but there should be a very quick fix. Um, could be a very quick power-up that we can add. Um, so you can just add a button or something like that, 
and it just refreshes the whole form if the user wants to delete everything and start over again. Yeah, so um, yeah, these are actually quite a lot of ideas. You guys will actually make for great super fans. So if you want to honestly, yeah, so informally, um, yeah, make sure you know you sign up and whatnot, and um, yeah, you can you know suggest all these and we can bring them to fruition. Um, yeah, yeah, is there anything else you want cool. to do with them or? Should we? I don't know if I should do a live because that could get very complicated. Um, mm-hmm. But maybe I'll try to explain how logic works because once we start building, it's not as simple as building a multi-step form. Um, but mm-hmm. I will show you how. Um, I was not planning to do this, but I'll just show everyone how this um, agency contact form is built. So this is the flowchart that I've made. This is exactly what you would see in a form, um, and I'm going to explain what each attribute is and how you set something that, like this up on Webflow. So one main thing is whatever that's on Formly Basic, all the attributes, all the power-ups should work with Logic Form, barring some, which we'll explain in the dashboard once you sign up. But uh, And that there are some couple of extra attributes that you need to add. But essentially, it's an add-on on top of Formly, um, the multi-step form. So how would you set this up? Pretty much how you would set up a basic multi-step form using Formly. All the steps are laid out like this. And one thing that you got to remember is Formly logic keeps going forward. You, right now, we cannot go back. So if, a, let's say, you have a step that connects the user back to the past question, we can't do that at the moment. So each step has to go forward. That's one sort of minor limitation or a feature, depending on how you look at it. The form still goes forward. So whenever you're designing a, a logic flow, you got to keep in mind that that sort of redirect to the back to the top is not possible yet, but we'll work on it. Where right now, most forms, you know, you want them to progress down the form. So it, it's only going forward. So here we have name, company, have a website, right? Three simple steps. How would you set that up? Very simple. So you have three steps. Inside each form step, you have three, um, you know, one input in each. That's pretty straightforward. We all know how that how to do that with formally, uh, basic formally. Now, how do I set up these two questions? You know, how do I set up? How do I ask for the user for the URL, or how do I put in like this checkbox or this radio button? So in your fourth step, so look at it, this is step one, step two, step three, step four. Uh, step three, this 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 part of step three, and this is step four, right? In step four, you'll have two instances of step wrapper. That means, so this is, you show this when the user selects yes, and you show this when the user selects no. That's the basic explanation of how it works. So when they go to the next step from step C, when they go to step D, you want to show them the correct field, right? You want to show them the correct element. And how you do that is using attributes. So to your yes radio box, you give an attribute called data go to equals website. So now what you're telling the code to do is whenever I click on it, go and find the, in the next step, go and find the element that has an answer of website. So you're, you're telling the go to element to find an answer with the same value. So this is your name, this is your value. You have to make sure the value is the same. So when I click on it, the code is now reaching to the next step. And it's checking which step wrapper has data answer equals website. And if it finds that, it shows that and nothing else. And if it doesn't find that, it just shows a blank page. So whenever if you're working with formally, uh, formally logic, if you go to the next step but you're not seeing anything, the main issue is you probably haven't connected um, your input to your next um, output. So here, when you say, no, I don't have a website, very Straightforward as before, you just add an attribute data go to no website basically. And now, when you click on it, the code is now reaching out to the next step and it's finding which element has the same attribute, same value attribute with the same value. So it's looking for data answer equals not website. So now, if you think about it, you have connected this button to this div and this button to this div. That's that's the the basics of formally logic. Like that's all you need to know as a bare bone concept. And that will allow you to build all these multi different, all these different things. 
And the same thing goes with pricing. So here in step, <clears throat> sorry, in step F, there's four options and you can have as many options as you want, right? But here we have four options and each, depending on which option you click on, it shows one of these four. Does that make sense? So you will sort of have the same inputs, but we'll have based on what the user has clicked, it shows them a different, different div. And when a user submits a form, unfortunately you get all the submissions, but if you actually label your, your fields properly, it should be very easy for you to actually read through the data. But yeah, that's a very high level concept on how, how formally logic works. You're basically connecting your input to an output. And that's basically with two attributes, which is data go to and um, data answer. Another thing that we thought about is what if someone goes down this branch, right? Let's say they go down this branch, but I have a required field somewhere else that the user doesn't see. If you know anything about Webflow forms, you cannot submit a form or any form. You cannot submit a form if there's a required field that's not filled in. For this, we have attributes. If you're a pro user, you'll know how to use this, but there's a way for, for the code to sort of crawl back which part the user sort of came from and make all the other unfilled inputs as unrequired. Even though on Webflow, you can make all the fields required, but based on what the user has selected, it only makes those fields required and unrequires everything else. So you don't, so the user is not stuck anywhere in the form, you know? So that's a feature that we thought about that's already implemented. That's a way to get that. Um, but yeah, was that confusing? Let me know if like, if I, yeah, if I need I think, to be more clear. I think that makes a lot of sense. If anyone has any questions, you know, regarding how logic works, just drop it in the comments. Um, but the basic concept is think of it like a tree, right? If you answer Basically. this question, if your answer if, if your answer is yes, it goes to X. If it is no, it goes to X. You know, so yep. it's very simple and you do all of this through attributes. Um yep. so yeah, that's kind of the basic concept. But I think once you've once you actually, you know, get formally, you know, go on tryformally.com, then and then if you, you know, start a project and you're actually in, you know, the works. It's pretty yeah. simple to understand. Um, but the moment, we have a question the moment from, it works. from Philip. Yeah. So we, we have a question yeah. from Philip. Superfan is a one-time price and I can use Formly yeah. on all client sites. Yes, so Superfan yeah. is a one-time price of 199 bucks, And can you use it on all client sites, Phil? Yeah, so even in the pro account or whatever, there's no limit on how many client projects you can use on. It's unlimited for everyone. Um, but life, life, lifetime, you pay once and you have access to form leave for, for the rest of your life. Even if you don't want it, too bad you have it. <laughs> yeah, so forever, literally. Cool. Literally. That um, That's for like, you know, supporters that actually believe in this and see all the benefit and you want to get in early. That's like the best plan. And and trust me, there's a lot of, th a lot of things planned out for form leave. For sure. Yeah. So if anyone has any more questions, feel free to to uh, drop it below but I think um, we are good to uh, wait one second um, yeah. did we miss out on anything then? not really I think I think I covered everything that I wanted to um, yeah let's just but... wait for a couple moments for Q&A and then we can yeah. you know, do our outro so. cool but yeah I'm, I'm a bit cool. you know excited one more oh wait i Sorry, forgot then. yeah go on okay Sorry. let's answer the question uh yeah so dimitri because i haven't seen anything from webflow logic how does this compare to native logic cool good question but i need to be clear that webflow logic is different from formally logic so webflow logic is very similar to zapier right where mm -hmm. based that is a more of a back-end thing once the user fills out a form, based on what they have filled out, then you do perform logic. That's a different kind of logic. Formally logic is very similar to type form. So based on what the user is, it's more front end. So based on what the user mm -hmm. has input, you show and hide things on a form to help the mm -hmm. user journey to, to make the form much more user friendly. I know the name mm -hmm. is very confusing, but this is also a sort of logic. It's called conditional logic. Um, it's nothing to do with Webflow logic, but 
but I would I will say with membership and logic coming to Webflow, forms are going to be way more important than they ever been. So imagine if you're building a membership site, which I think a lot of companies are going to do with Webflow logic, uh, with Webflow membership, you can then use Formly in a multi-step form based on what plan they select, right? Like we can do one for Formly as well. Like based on what plans you select, it's going to ask you a different question and go redirect you to different payment plans. So, yeah. and especially, um, and I also think that leads to, yeah, go. sorry, Vim. I think that leads to Dimitri's second question, which I think you just answered, which is, uh, will Formly have a uh, native membership integration? So I think you... that means, can you use Formly in a Formally. membership site? I'm not sure. <clears throat> so yeah, so the thing is, you can use Formly however you want because it's still a Webflow form. At the end of the day, it's still, it's built on Webflow. It is, we are not building a whole form solution. It's a multi-step solution. As I, as I said before, you're still using Webflow forms. So with this Formly Pro and Formly Logic, you can actually build to send data to, you know, Webflow membership and Webflow Logic. It's not, it's not going to stop you from doing that because at the end of the day, Webflow Logic and Webflow membership still use Webflow forms for it. So this is just a way for you to build more customizable forms, multi-step forms and forms with logic. Then you can send that data, whatever data you have captured to Webflow membership or Webflow logic. Like we, it's not, it's its own thing. It's built on top of Webflow. It's built for Webflow. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Um, any more questions? If there's no more questions, I think, yeah. So, um, cool. I mean, before before you go, I want to just show. Oh yeah, you said you missed out on something. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So if you do sign up, you get access to two um, features right now. So formula logic and form memory, but there's going to be country code drop down coming soon. Um, let's see if I can quickly. It's not ready yet, but I just want to you know be sneaky and maybe show you guys a couple of things. Yeah. For, but, for yeah so imagine. This, this is sneak peek. Yeah, so this is not out yet. So this is basically what you can do with just attributes. All of this is pulled from a database. Oh, um, even the emojis. Add... That's, that's quite cool. Yep. So this is a power up. So you can have one without the emoji. You can have one with the emoji. You can have just the emoji, but I don't think that's good. But you can even have like search. So you can you can search for the country. So this is going to be very good for UX. So because nobody wants to, you know, scroll down a long list of countries mm, yeah but here you I can hear when search. That happens, man I, I remember in webflow when you set the time zone you can't search oh uh, yeah things, so it's so annoying trying to find it but this is this so is all cool. of this is you know all of it's attribute based and you can we have also sort of segmented it out of um in continents so you know if wow, you're from africa cool. it shows you all the africa so all of this is like attribute based we went one step further there's also country calling code so based, uh, if you can capture that was actually Dimitri's number. question, and you just answered it. Will we have country codes for phone numbers? Yeah, we yeah, do. it's all all attribute based. So yeah. you get just the number, just the number with the country. You can get number with the emoji. You can just get number with the short name. You know, with just like I N for India or something like that. You can search. So if you are, oh, it's not working now, but. Yeah, if you search for plus four four, so if you're in the UK, these are all the countries that use plus four four. UK uses plus four four, so you can click on that. India is plus nine one. You just type that and you get that. And there's also a sorting again based on which region you're from. So this is going to be mm -hmm. a huge power up for Formly. Um, that's going to be very useful for UX. I mean, uh, bro, I, I would get Formly just for that feature because that's, <laughs> that's very useful. I think um, so. We got another Sign up. question from yeah. Mohammed. Um, is there a power up coming for Formly to have different interactions for different parts of the form flow? Yes. So that was part of our, our initial release was to use Webflow interaction, but we ran into a massive bug that we still haven't, uh, we didn't fix it before we launched, but that is coming. So Webflow interaction, native Webflow interaction is going to come soon. So based on um, which part of the form they are, you can run a different interaction when when it comes to view so that's definitely coming it's already done still haven't launched it yet yeah so yeah a lot of the features there's going to be a ton more stuff coming soon guys i think uh we discussed quite a lot so if you guys didn't already know if you just joined the stream now 
formally logic, man. Like, there's so much. Firstly, there's a, a lot of um, stuff that you can do. The possibilities yeah. are almost endless. And on top of that, there's a lot more extra features that you have becoming a formally pro member. And on top of that, if you want to come on board, make sure you become a super fan and then you can, you know, jump on the board of formally and make decisions and whatnot side by side with Vim. Yeah, really excited. There's a ton of features as well. My favorite one, it has to be the country code stuff and, you know, the phone numbers <laughs> and all of that stuff. But yeah, there's going to be a lot, a lot more features coming soon. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to sign up and if we sold you, then uh, Hopefully. go on the link. Yeah, try formally.com yes. forward slash new logic or pricing just go on the website and um sign up and um yeah we're excited to see you guys there i think there yeah, are a couple more questions i'm, yeah, I'm a bit one nervous because question yeah. from, <laughs> one more question from dimitri is it possible to have an option for slight or custom delay between steps i believe there is and that one is even for formally for, for, for the free plan as well isn't it Vim? yeah so actually not yet because right now the sort of fade in, fade out animation is, I think, hard coded. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we haven't made that um, something that you could control oh, because our because our final end goal is to use Webflow interaction and not jQuery mm -hmm. animation. So then you will have you know infinite control on exactly what you want to do when the form sort of comes in view. We had this working. Um, there there were examples that we planned out, but the main issue that we ran into with that was that it resets interaction on all in, on your yeah. whole site. So any animation you have, it re keeps resetting every time it goes to the next step. And we still haven't, we didn't figure out how to do it. But when that works, this, you know, you could control it yourself with Webflow interaction. So that's definitely coming out soon. Yeah, that's definitely coming out soon. Cool. Um, awesome. All right, guys. Thank you very much for the stream. If you have any questions, make sure that you reach out to Vim. He's the man to go to if you have any questions about Formly. But yeah, guys, yep. make sure you go on trackforme.com. Links and all of that stuff is going to be in the description. But yeah, guys, excited to see you there. And uh, oh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Yeah, <laughs> man. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.